The strengths and challenges of India and Indonesia's relationship as well as their long links over the years have been put together in a new book. Masala Bumbu is the result of the commitment of people in both countries to taking that relationship to the next level. Masala Bumbu is a compilation of experts and public figures' views from both India and Indonesia on how the country's partnership can be advanced in the coming decade. It was launched at the India House in Menteng, central Jakarta, over the weekend. Masala Bumbu offers perspectives on issues including sustainable development, the Indian Ocean, civil society, trade, energy, technology and even corporate social responsibility. It also covers the historical relationship, including the country's shared struggle with colonialism. The book's editor, the ambassador of India to Indonesia and Timor Leste, Gurjit Singh, says it's a highlight of Sahabat India, a festival of India in Indonesia that just finished a run of several months in major cities like Jakarta, Makassar, Surabaya and Yogyakarta, as well as Bali. Singh says Masala Bumbu gives a broader agenda for future cooperation and intensifying links between the countries. I think uh, India and Indonesia have a very ancient partnership. But over a period of time, I think it needs to evolve. So the idea was, can we find new areas where India and Indonesia, both young nations, demo democratic, developing and pluralistic, can find a new path for themselves, both within their countries, in the region and internationally. The title Masala Bumbu is taken from the words for spice in Hindi, Gorathi and Marathi, Masala, and Bahasa Indonesia, Bumbu. It has a diverse list of distinguished Indian contributors. They include Skyhub CEO Jay Chauhan, Indrani Bagchi, senior diplomatic editor with the Times of India, the former chair of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Rajendra Kumar Pachari, and award-winning journalist Pallavi Ayar. I arrived um, just as both India and Indonesia were gearing up for elections and as a journalist, you know, I mean there were really a whole range of similarities from the cast of characters that was actually standing for elections to the number of political parties um, to the way in which the political actors and stakeholders expressed themselves. They really were democratic siblings, something that was very different. The list of Indonesian contributors is no less impressive featuring, among others, Ambassador Dina Patijalau, the academic and political observer Dwi Fortuna Anwar, the president of Lippo Group Theo L. Sambuaga, and Endi Bayuni, senior editor at the Jakarta Post. Endi took the chance to criticize the media in both countries for failing to properly inform the public on the changes and developments that have been happening, missing the chance to lay the groundwork for stronger ties. Well, I think the it's also a reflection of the the gap that had uh, existed in our relationship you know we are two countries that are actually geographically very close we talk about andaman and aceh uh, we are also also uh, spiritually are very close because in indonesia had been a hindu and buddhist uh, kingdoms uh, before the majority of us became muslims so we had that spiritual and uh, and emotional connections uh, although the majority have become muslims but as you can see, many people here still have uh, Indian sounding names and we still follow many of the cultures for that, uh, that had been uh, practiced by our, our Hindu and Buddhist ancestors. So we are very close, but I think something happened. Uh, of course, in, in, the, in the 50s, our leaders, Sukarno and Nehru, played a role in launching the non-aligned movement, the Bandung uh, Asia Africa Conference, which actually brought the two countries very close together. Masala Bumbu dissects the present relationship between India and Indonesia to try to identify what can be done to improve it. It's available in bookstores near you.